today we're going to talk about the M1917 Enfield, or the American Enfield. This was formerly known as the United States Rifle Caliber 30, model of 1917. It was made by three manufacturers, and this particular one is made by Remington. So these rifles are based off of the British uh, Pattern 14 uh, Enfields, uh, except these are chambered in 30 out 6 instead of the British 303. Uh, the story of how these came about was essentially, long story short, um, before World War I broke out, the British wanted to modify and change their Enfield rifles. They didn't think there was enough power in the 303, and they wanted to come up with a different uh, caliber and rifle. So they came up with the Pattern 13, or the P-13 Enfield. It was supposed to be chambered in a different round than the 303. Now, that being said, they didn't quite perfect the round as World War I actually broke out. So the British found themselves needing more rifles, so they contracted out to the U.S. through uh, Winchester and Remington, and then the third manufacturer, Ediston, who was a subsidiary of uh, Remington. Um, they basically just had them, they hadn't perfected the new round yet, so they just had those companies produce them in the British 303, the old round. So those were deemed the P-14s or the Pattern 14s as opposed to the P-13s. So obviously when World War I breaks, or when we enter World War I, I should say, we find ourselves in the same problem. We also need more rifles. We were already producing the M1903, and we had delivered roughly, I think a little over 800,000 to the front lines, but we still needed more rifles. So those companies are already tooled to make the P-14 rifles, for the British, so basically we just took that design and we just chambered it into 30 out 6, which the 1903 was already in. So for logistical reasons, they made it easier. It was also easier just to retool and put a different barrel in and do a few small changes versus retool the, all of the manufacturers to make more 1903s. So little known fact too is not only were we producing these. But if you go by numerical uh, numbers, the, the, um, the M1917 Enfield was actually more widely used by U.S. troops in World War I than the M1903 was. So this is technically your main battle rifle of World War I U.S. troops, and the M1903 was the secondary battle rifle. So between the three U.S. manufacturers, you've got Remington, you've got Winchester, and you've got Ediston. Now, like I had mentioned before, this particular one is a Remington, and according to the serial number, this was made December of 1918, so one month after the war ended. Ediston produced the most, making 1,181,908 of the 1917 Enfields. Remington produced the second most with 545,541 rifles. Winchester produced the least with 465,980. The M1917 Enfields ended up far outproducing the M1903s in production numbers, and by the end of the war, the M1917 was actually the it was 75% of it made up 75% of the rifles over in France used by the US. A cool little uh, tidbit about the M1917 is uh, this is the, actually the rifle that Sergeant York uh, used when he won his Medal of Honor. Uh, he was using an M1917 uh, Enfield and not an M1903 Springfield. And if you don't know uh, who Sergeant York is or what he did, do yourself a favor and go look that up because uh, that was extremely impressive. So. so this here is an example of the five round stripper clip with five rounds of 30 out six. Now this is all World War II or 1943 dated 30 out 6, but same type of stripper clips. And actually the stripper clips for the 1917 Enfield and the M1903 were interchangeable. Stripper clip would go in right there, you would push the rounds in, and then you would lock and load. Now this guy here has a little safety where you bring that back and the rifle will not fire. You've got your rear sights here with a pretty cool little aperture, pop-up aperture there. And there's your little peep sight there. And then you've got your front sights there. 
Uh, this guy has a flaming bomb or flaming ordinance stamp on the charging handle and also right there on that side rail. I picked this guy up at the last gun show I went to for a pretty decent price and it actually came with a bayonet which as I had mentioned before and I have done a video that featured them this takes the M1917 bayonet which is uh, based off of the P uh, the, the P14 or the Pattern 14 bayonet. The difference being that on the uh, M1917 bayonet, the um, what do you want to call it? The barrel ring is spaced differently, and it's a different size. Obviously, the fit over a 30 out six barrel versus the 303. You can see the bear the bayonet lug there on the bottom. Um, aside from that, let's see. You've got your Firing proof uh, P stamped right there. And there is, it looks like a uh, Arsenal stamp there that I can't quite make out, unfortunately. But it's right there. You know, you've got your standard, it says US model of 1917 Remington and the serial number. Very faint stamp right there. On the barrel you've got an R for Remington I assume, a flaming ordnance bomb, and a 918 stamp right here. That might not uh, focus too well. The whiting's not super great in here. Um, it looks pretty original, it looks like it's good condition. The uh, the barrel looks pretty good inside. Uh, it could be cleaned a little bit but it's not too bad. The rifling's still pretty crisp. Uh, all that good stuff and the action works so yeah pretty stoked to add this to my collection i've been wanting one for a while and it just happened to be a good price with bayonet included that's all i've got for you guys today so until next time be good like subscribe comment all that good stuff